Okay, this is just a short video to um, show you my tank and talk through the filtration that I've got going on. Um, I'm hoping that this shows how um, crystal clear the, the water is. Sorry, a bit of reflection going on there. Um, I've got a breeding net in here at the moment because uh, my guppy that you can just see there has just had babies. So, parents for the first time. That's all very exciting. Um, and what I'm going to show is um, this setup down here. This tank is connected to um, a test hydroponic system and I'll talk about that uh, in a minute but the principally the filtration is done here um, via three uh, external uh, items that I've got on this uh, aquarium. Uh, to the left the vertical um, structure is um, a radial flow um, filter and I'll talk about uh, how I built that and uh, what that does. Um, the grey structure at the bottom is a sump and it's a standard sump that someone would use in a boat or a caravan um, as a water container. Um, sitting on top of that is a black um, 5 litre, it's actually a fishing food container I think, I purchased that on eBay. Um, and that is a moving um, bio uh, filtration unit that I um, am running some K1 in um, really just to see um, how K1 works and um, uh, how effective it is. Uh, uh, exiting the um, sump Um, I have the water going into an Eheim Professional 2 external uh, canister filter. I've set this uh, canister filter up so I'm, I'm not going to open it up. I've set this canister filter up uh, following uh, Pond Guru's um, instruction. So I have um, filter pads in the bottom basket and then I have two trays above that that contain the bio home uh, mini ultra uh, filter media uh, that he sells. Um, the um, pump then pushes the uh, water through um, an external heater there um, uh, which is uh, over the back and then back up into um, the tank. I have under um, uh, bed uh, jets and uh, the only reason I have those is uh, because it was recommended to me that the uh, external heater um, uh, that I have would be more effective and use less power if um, the water um, coming into the tank was spread across a larger surface area. Um, so I've um, run some piping underneath the sand and I've followed, um, I'll find it later, um, a, another YouTube video uh, to create a, an underwater jet system. Just have the three jets which um, uh, create a stream type effect in the tank with the water being pushed in uh, one direction and therefore creating um, circulation around the tank. Um, but what I wanted to talk about uh, principally in this video was the, the radial flow that I have set up here. Um, it is essentially um, a waste pipe uh, fittings and um, I've uh, used uh, principally um, a 
two joiners that have the inch and a half outlet and that allowed me to use the standard inch and a half fittings um, for the flexible hose that you can see I'm using here and also the um, tank fitting so I have inch and a half show them up in here I have inch and a half um, uh, exits uh, from the tank one of those is um, a overflow exit it goes straight into the sump uh, the one on the left um, comes um, down and into the bottom of the uh, radial flow um, I'll then just I'll open this uh, uh, radio flow and let you see inside. So inside the radio flow, um, there's a number of things going on. First thing here that I'm going to pull out is um, a perlite sock, and I'll talk about that um, in a minute. I'll just get it out. And then we have a disc of standard um, pond filled with just the heavy grade one. And down in there, uh, I'm not sure if it's showing up properly, uh, down in there is um, an upturned um, juice bottle. And that sits over the top of the um, inch and a half um, pipe that comes in from uh, the bottom. So this inch and a half pipe comes in, comes up to about here, and then the bottle sits over there. The effect is that the water is immediately turned um, back down. It has to come down past the bottle, which uh, sits about here in the tube, and then floods out and then comes up the sides. Um, that forces the majority of the heavy material to sit in this piece here and that again is just a, a reducer, 4 inch reducer um, and then a to a 2 inch uh, fitting and then I've got a 2 inch reducer to half inch fitting and then effectively a tap on the bottom so I've just turned this in really into a bottle with a tap uh, that allows me to pour off um, the heavy um, waste um, into a bottle and that's effectively how I do my water changes is out that through that tap. Um, uh, as the water exits, it exits through the top here um, which is why I have um, uh, the filter. Um, that means that the actual majority of the heavy I'll just put this back in. Heavy filter cleaning that I'm doing, I'm doing in this unit. Um, and I'm not really um, uh, interacting with the Eheim uh, very much at all. Um, uh, about once every two months, I'll um, take the Eheim apart and um, just check how clean it is in there. But um, since I've been using this radial flow, I found that there's very little need for me to interact with the Eheim at all. Um, the perlite, uh, I'm not sure if it shows up in the light. As you can see, the sock gets dirty. And um, the perlite is the reason that I've got such clean water. Um, before I had um, the perlite in the radial flow I was just running it like this and there was quite a lot of very fine materials that was passing through the entire system and back into the tank and I had quite cloudy water. Um, I heard someone on YouTube talking about using perlite in the system so this was just really an attempt to see how effective it is and this is pretty much how it works, it just sits in the top there um, and it catches all of the fine sandy muck um, that, and or 
um, items that are floating around in the water. They get caught up in that sock before the water goes uh, flows on through the system. And uh, literally once um, a week I remove those two items, the filter and the perlite sock. I give them a rinse and um, I put them back in the radial flow. Job done. That's my cleaning routine. Um, I don't really interact with the um, K1 media at all other than to check that it's, it's functioning okay. Um, uh, I've used uh, light or, or black containers and in this case a heavy grade um, a grey container so that um, the water is completely dark all the time. That prevents um, any algae growing. And I hope as you can see the water in there is extremely clear. There's no muck floating around in there, there's no particles floating around in there. Um, it's extremely clean. Um, and effectively what that means is by the time that the water um, flows into the Ehi here there's just no heavy particles in it at all um, and it, a very clean um, uh, water that is hitting the biomedia um, and I hope that that will uh, increase the life of my my, my whole filtration. Uh, there we are that's uh, my setup uh, I'm not sure if the fish are showing up very well in here um, I've got yellow barbs I've got green tiger barbs I've got a couple of guppies in there I've got um, two uh, dwarf rainbow grammies which are hiding right now and I've got a pair of killfish um, I also have um, about um, seven or eight um, uh, shrimp uh, in there for algae control. Um, I've got a little bit of brown algae going on on the um, rocks and things but uh, it's not too out of control right now so I'm not uh, that bothered about it um, and the shrimp seem to like it so I'm going to leave it alone for now. Uh, that's, that's all I've got to say. Um, any comments, I'd appreciate them. Uh, any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Uh, this is the first video from East London Kiwi.